small hatchbacks. If you want something different than the obvious Ford Fiesta, Volkswagen Polo or Vauxhall Corsa, it's possible to grab something with just a little bit more character. So which should you choose between the sharp and stylish Nissan Micra, the cool and curvy Citroen C3 or the mini SUV like Suzuki Ignis? Tell you what, this could be a video review of which company makes the best colour of orange. Is it Nissan, Citroen or Suzuki? In fact, why not just click up there to actually cast your vote. To help you decide which of these three is best for you, I'm going to critique their designs. It's sort of like, honey, I shrunk the SUV. Inspect their cabins. It's blooming tiny. See how practical they are. It just comes and then hangs there like some unloved puppet. And test what they like to drive. It's definitely the one you like to do longer distances in. But first, let's talk cash. The Suzuki Ignis starts from just over £10,000. The Citroen C3 starts from just over £11,000. But the Nissan Micra, it starts from just over £13,000. So it's a bit more expensive than the other two. But what really matters is the price you actually pay for one of these cars. And if you click up there to go to carwow.co.uk, you can actually configure your ideal version of one of these cars, or any car for that matter, and dealers will come back to you with the best prices they can offer. And that allows you to compare deals without even having to haggle. So the Micro will cost you the most of the three to buy, and it's much more expensive than the old model, but it doesn't take long to see what the extra cash gets you. The old Nissan Micro was an anonymous blob. I mean, just look at it. Ugh. This new one, though, it's sharper, it's edgier, it's cooler. In fact, Nissan have even given it the same grill that they use on their GTR supercar. So it looks the same, doesn't it? Those sharp creases and the sporty shape means that the Micro looks a little bit like it's been beamed straight from a manga comic. In comparison, the C3 looks as French and eye-catching as the Pompidou Centre. In a good way, of course. The Citizen C3 is a very quirky looking car and you can personalise it. So you can get nine colours for the bodywork, three for the roof and two for these side strips. They're called air bumps and you can get them on the top two specification cars and they're filled with little pockets of air and they're designed to protect it from car park prangs. There. Not to be outdone by the Zany C3, the Ignis can turn a few heads as well, but not always for the right reasons. You're either going to like or loathe the look of the Ignis. There's going to be no two ways about it. I mean, personally, I quite like the look of it. It's sort of like, honey, I shrunk the SUV. And I also like the fact that it seems to be wearing a bank robber's mask. It's kind of going, hello, I'm an Ignis, and I'm here to relieve your bank account of a sum of money. Don't worry, though, it'll be a reasonable amount, that's all. But one thing that wheeled bandit hasn't robbed me of is its character inside. Suzuki has been very canny with this car's interior. So by using this two-tone effect and colour coding on the inside, they've really lifted the cabin. Just don't go touching anything, because if you do, you'll soon realise where the money you haven't spent hasn't gone, because it's all just cheap and nasty. I mean, look at this. Yep. That glove box isn't the only sign that the car's been built down to a price. The infotainment system fitted to the Ignis is a stuck-on pioneer unit, and it's nowhere near as good as the best built-in systems you can get on some other small hatchbacks. There's a couple of tiny, fiddlier buttons along the bottom of the screen, and the graphics on the touchscreen itself are messy. Although the software is bad, at least you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are much nicer to work with. The microsystem is so much easier to use. It's not quite up to the standard of the system you get in a Seat Ibiza, but it looks nice enough, loading times are okay, and it's a doddle to operate. The C3 system sits somewhere in between the other two. It looks nice enough, and the satellite navigation works fine once you're used to it, but a few physical buttons would make the system more user-friendly. In fact, the infotainment system's mix of good and bad nicely sums up what I think of the Citroen's cabin. I've got a sort of love-hate relationship with the interior of this Citroen C3. So I really like the design and how they've got this rectangle theme running throughout the cabin. I also love the seats. They're big, comfy armchairs. They're great. Then there's annoying things like the fact that if you want to operate the climate control, you have to do it through the screen. It's the only way you can do it, which is a bit annoying when you're driving. And this is the most frustrating thing, the glove box. It's blooming tiny. It's because Citroen can't be bothered to move the fuse box across to here when they move the wheel across. Thanks, guys. So that laissez-faire attitude to moving fuse boxes means that the C3 has a smallest glove box here. The cup holders are a little shallow in the centre console too, but at least the door bins are huge and there's a couple of extra shelves dotted about the place. The Ignis is more miserly. Other than the bottle holders in each of the doors and a modest glove box, that's all there is in terms of in-car storage. The Micra has the best storage spaces here. The smartphone size cubby ahead of the gear lever is very handy and the door bins are good for a bottle or two. Look around the rest of the cabin and it continues to impress. The interior of the Micro just feels 
the poshest, the most substantial, the nicest to be in. And you can get some choice upgrades as well, such as a speaker in the driver's headrest, which bounces sound all around the car, creates this concert hall effect. You can also get two-tone trim, nice leatherette up here on the dash, and stuff like surround view cameras. Look at that. That reversing camera is standard on the top specification Tecno model and is optional on all but the basic version. You'll really need it though because the thick rear pillars make it hard to see out the back window. It also means that the back seat experience is a little bit dingy as well. And that's not the only problem. The rear passenger space is the chink in the Nissan Micra's armour. For instance, no model has electric windows in the back. They're all windy downy, even this expensive range topper. There's no door bins in the back either, look. Nowhere to put your bottle. And while knee room is okay, headroom, look, it's on the tight side. It's a bit of a squeeze in the back seats with three, but then that's kind of common for this size of car. And at least there's plenty of foot room under the seat so you can stretch out a little bit. You don't expect these kind of cars to be particularly large in the back, but the Citroen does suffer from rather tight knee room. I mean, look at that, there's not much there at all. And if you're thinking about buying this car and you want to carry adults in the rear quite often, don't get the optional glass roof because it does eat into headspace. I mean, look at this, I've got none at all if I sit up straight. It's not quite so bad if you don't have that roof. Now, the Suzuki is the smallest car here, but it doesn't actually feel it when you're on the inside. The Ignis is surprisingly roomy here in the back, so knee room's pretty good. So too is headroom, thanks to the tall body. The seats sit quite high as well, so you're at a good angle. And on the top two specification cars, you can get rear seats that recline. Yeah, that's better. And they slide as well. They'll be warned, you can only sit then two people in the back rather than three. But really, you won't want to carry three in the back because the body is just a little bit too narrow. Also, the back doors are another problem. Even though the Ignis is the tallest car here, the opening is the smallest because they don't extend to the roof. They don't open very wide either, so it's a pain to get a child seat in the back. So, while it may be tall, the Ignis is short and narrow. That's most obvious when you're trying to carry luggage. The Ignis's boot is smaller than the other two cars, and be warned, if you go for the four-wheel drive version, it's 30% smaller than that of the front-wheel drive version. However, if you've got the car with the sliding seats, look at this, it doesn't matter, you can create more room by sliding them forward. Ta-da! If you're wanting to carry people and things, then the boot can handle a buggy and a couple of soft bags, or a couple of small suitcases. But there won't be space for a set of golf clubs. If you fold the seats down, you can fit a bike in as long as you remove the front wheel. The Micra is a clear step up from Suzuki in terms of its size, but how does it actually measure up? The Nissan Micra's boot is neither big nor small for this size of car. In fact, it's decidedly average, and it's it's also devoid of any kind of clever features. There's no 12-volt socket, no tethering points, there's not a risable boot floor, so there's very little for me to show you. But apart from this, look, there's no actual clips for the parcel shelf. It just kind of just comes in and then hangs there like some unloved puppet. In terms of the volume, the Micra is almost 100 litres bigger than the four-wheel drive version of the Ignis. That means it'll cope better with holiday packing, with enough room for one large and two small suitcases. With the back seats folded down though, there's really very little in it between the two. Both can hold a TV box, two medium boxes, two small boxes plus one large suitcase, one small suitcase and two soft bags. So how does the C3 compare? The C3 actually has one of the largest boots for this class of vehicle. It's a nice square shape as well, and they give you a couple of useful features. So there's a hook there and a couple of tethering points. Oh my, they really are spoiling us. So it's a hit from the practicality state, but how does the Citroen feel when you're driving? Let's hit the road to find out. The Citroen C3 feels a little bit like an old comfy sofa to drive, so it's all soft and springy. And it's a car that doesn't like to be hurried, really, because when you start to try and throw it around some bends, it, yeah, it runs out of ideas. It rolls about a bit because it's soft suspension. It all feels a little bit loose and baggy, as does the gear shift, which is the most nasty and rubbery. The clutch is a little bit stodgy, and the brakes, well, they're the complete opposite. You know, they're just super sharp. You touch them, and you're almost flying through the windscreen. Thank God for seatbelts, eh? In terms of the engines, the 1.2 litre turbo petrol is great, I'll go for that engine. This one has the 1.6 litre turbo diesel with 100 horsepower and it feels really quite quick. It's a bit noisy when you rev it, but it's very economical. So this one's doing ooh, 59 miles per gallon. Not bad at all. The Ignis doesn't have a diesel option like you get in the other two, so it's not the best car here if you do loads of motorway miles. But if you do a lot of city driving, it could just be perfect for you. 
The Ignis is quite a nice easy car to drive in town. You sit quite high in it so you get a good view out, although there still are a few blind spots. The controls are all nice and easy to use. However, when you start going a bit faster, the car does start to feel a bit on the cheap side. So the suspension is all bouncy over bumps, it rolls about in the corners, the steering's vague, and yeah, there's not much noise insulation either. Hmm. But, you know, it's, it's quite interesting to drive. You feel like you can rag it about without breaking the speed limit. The 1.2 litre engine that you can get, it's, it's good enough. You can get it with a hybrid system, which gives you a little bit of added boost, a little bit of extra performance when you need to overtake, though it never feels quick. Economy-wise, this particular car I'm driving here is supposed to do 60 miles per gallon, and I'm getting 50. It's all right, that is. But still, the Ignis does feel like a cheap car to drive. So now you know what the Ignis is like on the road, but I'm not quite finished with it yet. All right, so the Ignis may be a little bit flawed in the way that it drives, but it does have an ace up its sleeve, and that's the fact <laughs> you can get it with four-wheel drive and take it off-road. It can go places the other two cars fear to tread. I mean, yeah, couldn't do this in the other two. You might never want to do this in your car, in which case just get the two-wheel drive version, but it does just go to show you what this little Ignis is capable of. It really is an interesting, quirky, fun little car, which can pretty much do it all. Now, I wouldn't recommend trying that in the micro because you'll either end up getting stuck or you might break it. Best to keep it on tarmac, where it's much more impressive than the X. Now, it doesn't take long behind the wheel of the micro to realise that out of the three cars, it's definitely the best to drive. Now, it's not quite as soft in terms of its suspension, over bumps as the Citroen, but then it's not so soggy through the corners, is it, either? And while the Ignis probably has got a little bit more character, you do actually feel like you're just driving around in a tin can on wheels, whereas this feels like a more substantial car. It just feels more secure, it feels bigger. It's definitely the one you'd like to do longer distances in out of the three of the cars. Also, there's the engine, so the diesel in this one, it's strong, it's smooth. The economy, 52 miles per gallon, you know, not quite as good as the Citroen, but I prefer the engine overall. In terms of the turbo petrol you can get with this car, it's a 900cc. It's not as good as a turbo petrol in the Citroen, but I do prefer it than the 1.2 natural aspirated engine in the Ignis. Another thing worth noting about the Micra is that it's the only car here which comes as standard across the range with auto emergency braking, which is a great feature. One thing it doesn't have though is an automatic gearbox at the moment. So yeah, if you need an auto, you probably want to look at, at something else. So where does all that leave us? The Citroen C3, it's cool, it's comfy, but it's got quite a few annoying quirks. The Suzuki Ignis, it may be small, but it's surprisingly practical and it's great value for money, though it does feel a bit on the cheap side. The Nissan Micra though, it's the nicest inside, it's the most pleasant to drive and it's got the best safety kit. And yet it may cost more than the other two, but it's worth it because it feels like the most substantial car. And that's why it wins this test. Oh, and it's also got the nicest orange paint. Please like, share and comment on this video and click on our logo to subscribe for more. Also, you can click on the video windows to watch the detailed reviews of each of the cars in this test.